11. Okay. Before you before we start, I did pick up the pieces the of trash and blue chair. And this will be your kind of did the prayer. Okay. Now I'm going to check your attendance. Is there anyone absent, please? Anything not? Okay. Very good class. Keep it up. So before that, I want the activity or that worksheet. Uh, you're going to answer that. I'll give you five minutes to answer that. But before that, um, I have a question. And this question is connected to our topic later. Okay. So, this question is, What difficulties, this or dilemmas, or dilemmas, have you survive okay later on i will ask a volunteer to answer this question okay in order for you guys to motivate or i'll give you some um, okay yes miss Creto, you want to volunteer okay mm -hmm. oh very good very good that's true okay yeah so uh-huh yeah so now, I will introduce to you the Invictus, which will be the poem that we're going to discuss. Okay? So, that worksheet I gave to you earlier will be answered for five, five minutes. Are you done, guys? Yeah, okay. So, there will be a verse, yeah, that is connected to the poem Invictus. Okay? Okay, now, as, we, as you re read the poem, mm -hmm, you see that words. So now that words, we're going to. Uh, did you bring your deck? So as I gave you that worksheet, the, uh, we'll check it now because five minutes is done already. Okay. For the number one, the answer is. So the answer on that word or on that statement is uncarable. Uncarable. While the number two, which is to cringe or to recoil, the answer is which. So, and for number three, mm -hmm. for number three, what is it? To hit or to coerce. coerce. To hit or coerce, the answer is Glad. Glad. And for number four, the answer is Nines. Nines. And for the last number, which is the number five, the answer is Rock. Okay. Since I told you last time that you're going to bring a dictionary, you're going to check these words, what it is, and how to pronounce it. Okay, but how many of you got a perfect score in our first activity? Oh, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six of you got a perfect score. Okay, oh, so those who got uh, different scores, it's okay. Later on, you'll be familiar with these words. Okay, so. You're just going to check the meaning in order for you guys to be familiar in your dictionary. Okay, so now um, I want you to get your copy or uh, as I've said last meeting, uh, get a copy of the poem Invictus of William Hensley. Okay, okay, so as you're reading that poem, I will give you a guide question. So first, describe the character copy in this book, in this book. Okay, while well, reading silently, uh, and later on, you read it aloud or Carlos. So, while well, reading, I will write here the guide questions in order to, for you guys to know uh, what this book is about. Okay, mm -hmm. from the book. So, describe the character talking in this book. Uh -huh. From the Invictus. From the Invictus. Okay. Next is letter B. What is your initial reaction? Initial reaction. Initial reaction as you read or as you read the poem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will dictate it now since that I don't have a truck. So, for the letter C, what situations 
in the story reminds of people and situation in own life. So you're going to connect your story experiences or, or how they similar and how they are different. So from the following business you're going to remind or mm -hmm, yeah. So the next is what do the speaker tries to imply in the last stanza? And what is the significance of the message to the address? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are the writing words? Since that it is a poem. So what are the writing words used in the poem? And is there a rhyme sheet? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to check if there is and does the poem follow a metric pattern? Okay. And what is the dominant tone or mode in the poem? And cite some lines. Okay. You're going to cite some lines from the poem. Okay. Uh, in order for us to determine what mode or tone does the writer use. Mm -hmm. Okay. And letter H. What is the central theme of the poem and how is it revealed in the poem? And enumerate the imageries that appeal to the senses used in the poem. Identify the particular lines supporting the imagery. And what figures of speech in the poem? Oh, and you're going to explain how the use. Okay. Explain how they are used in the poem. And the last is the last guide question. What do you think the title means? And if I could change the title, how would I change it and why? So you're going to answer if you want to change, you want to change the title of the poem. You want to change the in the post. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as you are reading, you need to answer that. Okay. Mm -hmm. After analyzing that, I will call five volunteers to answer. Okay. So we have here um, A to K questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. If one of it's okay, and yeah, one person per one number. Is that okay, guys? Okay, now I will introduce to you the background of the writer of the poem. So the writer of the poem in Victus is William William Ernest Hensley. Henley, rather. So he is the writer of the poem in Victus. Or this is the author of the poem. So who is William Henley or William Ernest Henley? So William Ernest Hen Hen William Ernest Henley um, was born August 23, 1840, and died on July 11, 1903. So he was an influential English poet, critic, and editor of the late Victorian era in England. Through the road, through he wrote several books of poetry. Henley is remembered most often for his 1875 poem Invictus. So this is this was written 1895. A piece which recurred in popular awareness. Example that film last 2029. So this uh, we have here a movie in Victus. You can visit it on different sites, maybe in Netflix or in YouTube. Okay, then. During his lifetime, Henley had become fully or fairly well known as poet. His poetry had even made its way to the United States, mm -hmm. inspiring several different contributions from actors and the country to pen articles. Mm -hmm. About him, in 1889, the Chicago Daily Tribune ran an article about the promise that Henley showed in the field of poetry. So Henley was known as a man of inner resolve and character that transferred into his work but also made an impression on his peers and friends. Now we will proceed to the main discussion as I post it here at, in our board. Okay. I will just erase the writings on the board. Yeah. So our topic for today is about the literary elements. Okay, so what is literary elements? So literary elements refer to the overall and universal quality or description of any written or oral text. For example, that is the poem. Okay, and what was in the poem? So in the poem, there is a stanza. The stanzas are a series of lines grouped together and separated by empty by an empty line from other stanzas. 
There may be people that have a paragraph in an essay and one way to identify a stanza is to count of the number of lines. So if the stanza has one line, this is the one we call monostitch. Monostitch has one line. How uh, about these two lines is the one we call couplet. Okay, and the third set, uh, this is it is two lines, so third set has three lines or three lines and the quatrain, quatrain has four lines. So that stanza has four lines and the quintain is five lines and the C step has six lines. How about the step that has seven lines and the octave has eight lines. So these are the lines of stanzas. Next is the rhyme. So, in a poem, there's always a rhyme, okay? So, rhyme is the repetition of similar sound. In poetry, the most common kind of rhyme is the end rhyme. So, the last part of the line, okay, of the poem. So, which occurs at the end of two or more lines. Mm -hmm. That's familiar to you guys, yeah. So, it is usually identified with lowercase, and a new letter is used to identify each new end sound. And take a look at the rhyme scheme for the following. So I have here an example. I saw a fairy in the wood. So the end word is wood. So in the second line, he was dressed all in green. So as you can see, it is not a rhyme. But on the third line, he drew his sword, which I suggest stood. So the rhyme is in the first line, which is the wood. And in the third line, they, they are, there are the rhyme and then Stanza. So, wood and stood, and on the last line, red and realized I've been seen. So, green and seen. Okay, so that's the example of a rhyme. Next is the rhythm. So, what is rhythm? So, rhythm creates a pleasant gliding effect when we read a poem. So, it helps readers to travel along the line of the poem with a certain enjoyable tempo created by the components of the So I have an example. Never in my lonely life could you make it be my wife. So that's the reader. Or if I only, then she had seen that crime and anger were to have been. So those lines was in Invictus form. In the form of William Ernest Hensley. Okay. So next is the meter. So when you say meter, what comes into your mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's correct. So when we say meter, it is the systematic regularity and rhythm, the systematic rhythm. So systematic regularity or the systematic rhythm, or it is the sound pattern, which is usually identified by examining the type of feet and the number of feet. So yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Next is the word sound. So the word sound is another type of sound and it's the emphasis on or the impact that emphasize the individual sounds and words. So we have here uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have here six kinds of word sound. First is the alliteration, or it is the repetition of initial sounds on the same line. Stands up. For example, pig, hot dog, bounce, spring. So the same example of alliteration, which is the repetition of initial sounds in, on the same line. Next is the assonance. So what is assonance? The assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds or anywhere in the middle or end of the line or stanza. So the example of assonance is tilting, tilting at windmills. So as you can see, there are many vowels. So there are one, two, three, and four. There are four vowels. So the vowels there is the letter I. Okay, that's the assonance. How about the consonants? So, from the word consonants, it means that that is uh, about the consonant letter. So, consonants start with the repetition of consonant anywhere in the middle or end of a line or stanza. Mm -hmm. oh, so, the sample is, and all the air a solemn stillness holds of the great. Okay, so next is all of the words sound like that which they describe. For example, whoa, oh, a crush. <laughs> and more. So, all the topeyas are the words we use uh, or the sounds used in a story or 
it is writing. Okay, so as you can see, it is the expression. Okay, yeah, boom. So when we write boom or a word boom and it has a an exclamatory. Mm -hmm. So that is onomatopoeia, a sound that describes. And next is the repetition. So the repetition of enter line, entire lines, or phrases to emphasize key thematic ideas. Okay. So look, pull it, pull it. Oh no! So repetition, as from the word repetition, is that you're going to repeat and repeat the words or the lines. Okay? Uh, written. Okay, next is the parallel structure. So what is parallel structure? So parallel structure is a form of repetition where the order of the verbs of the nouns or the nouns is repeated. And it may involve exact words, but it more importantly repeats sentence is in structure. It's structure rather. So the example here is I came, I saw, and I comfort. So that is a parallel structure example. Next, now let's proceed to figurative or connotative devices. We have four figurative devices. This is simile, metaphor, personification, or image tree. Image tree. So simile is a rhetorical term used to designate the most elementary form of resemblance and most similes are introduced by life so similes are most introduced by likes okay or us or us okay so these comparisons are usually between the similar situation so you're going to react mm -hmm. situation or objects that have something in common, such as my love. So this is this is an example of simile. My love is like a red red roses. Okay. So that is the example of simile. So metaphor. So metaphor leaves out like or as and implies a direct comparison between all objects. Okay. All flesh. Is grass. So the example of metaphor, metaphor is all flesh is grass. Okay. So all flesh is grass because it implies direct compares comparison between object or situation. Next is personification. So what is personification? Personification, of course, when you treat abstractions or inanimate objects as human. <coughs> that is giving them human attributes, powers, or feelings. For example, nature web. So, an example of personification. Nature web or the wind whispered many truths to me. Okay, so that is the example of personification. Next is imagery. So, imagery. Imagery is the name given to elements in a form that part of the senses okay despite image being a synonym for picture image need not be only which one any of five senses for example we have five senses so we know that by that we can see or analyze an image okay and can respond to what poet writers okay on how or what does the poet tell us by using an image Oh, as we see it, uh, we will know what does the poet wants to convey. Okay. Next is the literary genres. So, like literary genres is a category of literary composition. So, genres may be determined by literary technique, tone, content, or event, as in the case of fiction. Then, so we have here five kinds of literary genres. First is the epic poem, next is the narrative poetry, romantic poem, dramatic poetry, and a lyric poem. Okay, these are the five kinds of literary genres. So, literary genres. So, what is epic poem? So, epic poem is a long narrative poem that is usually about the heroic deeds and events that are significant to the nature or a culture of the poet. Mm -hmm. So many ancient writer, writers rather use epic poetry to tell tales of intense adventures of heroic 
So, epico is from uh, epic or it is a hero. And the narrative, no, so narrative poetry is a form of poetry that tells story. So, narrative poetry tells story, often making use of voices of narrator and character as well. So, it is to ensure story is usually written and in meter. So, it has, it uses meters. So, meters. So, commonly, narrative poetry is a metered verse. So, narrative poem that do not have to follow rhythmic patterns. So, it doesn't have to follow rhythmic patterns. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how about the romantic poem? So, every one of you is excited with this, I know. So, romantic poetry is a poetry that emphasizes intuition over season and pastoral over the urban. Open achieving uh oops <laughs> So the next literary genre is the romantic poem. Romantic poem, I know that all of you are excited with this because I know some of you write or wrote a romantic poem for someone to love. Because why not? Especially during Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. I know guys you are. Uh, you have written this for your crush or any beloved ano, beloved, hmm, yeah, or some, someone you love. Huh? So what is romantic poetry? So romantic poetry is a poetry that emphasizes intuition over reason and pastoral over the urban, often achieving consciously poetic language in an effort to use more colloquial knowledge. So the most used words here is of course love. It, it's very commonly used word here is love because this is romantic poem. So, next is dramatic poetry. So, when we say drama, it's more of drama, of course. So, dramatic poetry is any drama that is written in verse that is meant to be recited. Oh. It usually tells a story or refers to a situation. Then, this would include close-set drama, dramatic monologues, and rhyme verse. Mm -hmm. So, the last is the lyric form. So, when you say lyric, it is common in it or it is common in a song. Okay, lyric form, it has or it has a musical rhythm. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's about music. So, it has a musical rhythm and their topics often explore about romantic feelings. So, it is connected to the romantic form. Because we all know that form can be a music or a sound. Yeah. So, it's it explores on romantic feelings or other strong emotions. So, the next is, we have also a literary tradition. So, we have literary tradition. Traditions. So, what is literary tradition? So, literary traditions is the passing down of stories which give meaning to human experiences according to literary articles or no. every linguistics group has literary traditions which is transmitted either orally or through writing okay is it clear to you guys oh okay very good so now i will do a post reading so uh, i'll read again to you the poem of invictus so those of william ernest henry out of mind that covers me, black as a peak from hole to hole. I think whatever guns may be for my uncurable sleep. In the felt clutch of circumstances, I have that means nor hide allowed. Under the bludgeoning links of chance, my head is bloody but unbound. Beyond this, place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yes, the measure or the menace of the years. Friends, I shall be unafraid, it matter not how straight the gate, how changed with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Okay, mm -hmm. now I'll give you an activity. Okay, do you have any question, class? Because it's our sober topic. Okay, no more. Okay, now I want you to group yourselves 
How many are you guys? Uh, 45. So each group group may have been a 15 members. Alright? You're going to select your leaders. You're going to choose your leaders. And if you have your leaders, you they will come here and pick here what will be there or what will be the assigned activity for you. Okay? Now we're done. Okay. I'll give you 15 minutes to prepare. Oh no, five minutes only. I'll give you five minutes to prepare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And five minutes left. You perform it according to rubric. I'll post here the rubric. So, do you have any questions left? If not, um, uh, you're going to answer the evaluation activity, and we'll be passed on to me later on. Okay? So I'll give you five minutes with that. And again, what do we have about the literary element? So literary element has stanzas, rhyme, rhyme, rhythm, meter, word sound, and word alliteration. Assonance, consonance, onomatopoeia, repetition, and parallel structure. While in figuratives or phonological devices, we have simile, metaphor, imagery, and in literary genres, uh, which can be determined according to literary technique, um, tone, content, or an event, we have five kinds or we have five genres, which is the epic poem, narrative poem, or narrative poetry, romantic poem, dramatic poetry, lyric poem, and we have our literary traditions. And, okay, so once you're done, pass it in France and um, kindly get it okay and then put it on my table. Uh, once you're done answering, I uh, will give you an assignment in order for us to determine if you have already know what we have discussed this um, this morning. Okay, so my assignment is my assignment for you guys that will be passed tomorrow uh, is this: create your own poem, create your own own poem, and you need to apply what we have discussed. Okay, apply. What we've discussed. Discuss. Okay? You have your own choice on what kind or what genre you will be doing. Okay? So, do you have any questions? Okay, no more. So, I'm going to end our session for today. Again, okay? good morning, class, and take care. Goodbye!